Yeah, so Waldenstrom is a, is a rare form of lymphoma that I mentioned. So it's a, a cancer that um, is founded in a type of white blood cell called a B cell. Uh, your bone marrow is where those, those cancer cells are produced and ultimately hang out. And that has a, a big sort of fingerprint on the disease. So these patients um, suffer from problems of having a dysfunctional bone marrow, so they have um, lot, they have anemia, so a great amount of fatigue. They have loss of platelets, so the bleeding issues. So they often can have um, even some slow uh, brain bleeds or bleeds into the eyes or even along your neurological system. So they can have permanent nerve damage. And then there's the actual cancer cells themselves. The reason why they're um, cancerous is they're overproducing a protein in the blood called IgM. And that excessive IgM is one of the drivers behind all of this um, systemic symptoms that I just raised. It's really, uh, it's almost like a, a double-edged sword, both in terms of the cancer and the B cells driving the cancer in the bone marrow and all the sequelae of that across multiple systems such as brain bleeds and, um, and neurological deficits. The average age of a well, Trump's patient, I think, is in the mid 60s. And then the duration of um, then kind of fighting the disease is about 10 years, unfortunately, before they succumb to it. Unfortunately, there are no cures for this disease, even with current standard of care. And so we're hoping um, the disease itself has actually a, a major driver in a genetic mutation. Uh, one gene called MYD88 is uh, present in a mutated form in about 90% of these patients. And for about two thirds of them, standard of care is fairly helpful. And then about one third of them have a second mutation. So they help me call it a double mutation patient. So they have the MYD88 mutation as well as a second mutation in CXCR4. And those are the patients that do the worst. They actually have the highest level of these serum proteins. They have the highest risk of having all these sequelae of that in, in terms of the neurological symptoms or possible uh, bleed out. So it's really the highest um, sort of underserved patient population that we're focusing on with Mavericks for. And we were excited about some of the recent data that we just presented, uh, kind of giving some early signs that we might be able to help these patients. The most recent innovation is in a, a drug called abrutinib, which is a gene, which is a drug that targets that first mutation. I mentioned the MYD88 mutation. This drug attempts, attempts to negate that effect. So it works pretty well for a fair number of patients in terms of getting them kind of to a more stable place where their disease is not progressing and then they can, can kind of live in a lower risk profile. Other uh, standard of care is rituximab or rituximab plus chemo, so the RCHOP combinations. Uh, obviously those have a lot more toxic effects for the patients and they're sort of drifting away from that since some of the more innovative drugs such as BTK inhibitors have come along.